these are the machines as they're unloaded from the containers. That's for changing it from transport mode to operation mode. Next step is to remove this chaseway here, this hose chaseway right here. Coming down. Okay. What we are going to do now is we are going to remove the support, the transportation support, for this side of the motor. And what that consists of is unbolting this bracket from the top of this frame. Uh, un unwrap this hose block, hose mount block right here. machine is shipped in a transport mode and this pin here needs to be repositioned to this location here. That puts it into the operation mode. So remove this collar, take the sleeve off, lift and move the arm over until the pin comes into this block box here to put the collar back on. Okay, we need to install a lift strap on this arm approximately 18 inches from this line right here. We aligned the forklift by running it through this location that we spoke at earlier. And then right here at this location, which runs between this adjustment and, and above the hose assembly. We lifted up the assembly. We dropped this pin out of this hole, which will then be slid sideways and for its final resting position into this hole here. Now, what we are also doing, we are also removing this transportation block that is located here. And we will tap that out and then lower back down that side and realign that hole. Side shifted the whole equipment assembly towards me. And now, what we will do is we will align it by grabbing the bottom and then realigning this hole, making sure that we are in the right location. Okay, come down a little bit. Okay, come up a little tiny bit. Okay, lower it down, Darren. Or hold it. Okay, come down. going to install the locking collar and, and all that is is taking the collar from originally where it was over here and then reinstalling it in this location here. This roller sits in its alignment tray. This is to reinstall the hydraulic hose block assemblies. install the outside slide rail along this uh, channel here. Next step is to lift the arm and install the guide rail. Got it. Now we are securing the countersunk bolts 
on the guide plate into the frame rail. I've loosened up these two lower bolts here, and we are now inserting the side guide arm into the into this location. Let me bring the front up a little bit. Sliding that in, and then we will so do an alarm. This is the corner guard. We're going to assemble that in these two channels right here. We've already got the nuts for the bolts pre-threaded with the nuts on them right here. Now we're just going to stick those in here. And then these bolts end up threading into this thread back here. Guard for the raceway here. Put in the adjuster bolts. Right now we're going to extend this uh, the arm here from the transport position to the operation position. And to do that, first off, we're going to renew, remove this uh, nut right here, one and three eighths inches, and the bolt. Bolt from here. Side guard. Check out that nail bed. Okay. So these are the adjustment rods for the side rail. And they go down here. Got another one up here. Let's do this one here. Rod goes in. Nuts go on. And then the rod threads in all the way down to that thread there. And these are the bolts you actually use for adjusting the distance that you want. You would uh, use the tape to adjust them right now, but this is where I set them. Screw this all the way in. Okay, right now we're setting the, um, the adjustment, the set of factory settings. Um, right here at this point, it's going to be 1 and 5 eighths from the outer part of the nail bed to the raceway. So we got 1 and 5 eighths inches on the very first section. Then we've got one and three quarter inches all the way around the whole assembly here until this very last adjustment is in there. It's going to want to be two and an eighth inches from this point out to this point. This still needs to be adjusted out to there, but factory is two and an eighth out to here. So, okay, today I would like to show you how to change or install the cutting saw blade on the Kirby Harvester. You'll need the following tools. A pin spanner, which is provided in the tool set, a 36 millimeter open end wrench, and a 22 millimeter wrench. There will also be in the, in the tool set uh, a recessed washer and a nut. Note that the washer has a recess in it, and that recess faces up when you place the washer on the shaft, and the nut is left hand, left hand thread. Also note the direction of the saw teeth. The saw teeth should be, or the saw should be installed um, with the direction as shown. Uh, the first step in changing the saw blade and installing the saw blade is to jack the front of the, the nose of the cutting arm up, block it so that it can't fall, and then remove the cover. Again, make sure that the cutting teeth are facing in this direction so that they're cutting in that direction. Slip the, slip the 
saw blade in. Hey, I'm Don Mossman, one of the founders of Triminator. We just finished a video showing you how to change this machine from the transport mode as you will receive it into the operation mode. There are a few things that I'd like to show you about the machine at this point. Um, in, in, the, in the box on the machine you'll find an adjustable tilt cylinder, PTO shaft, 546 line, and category 2 pins. This is a category 2 attachment. Uh, right now, this arm is extended in the operation mode, so your trailer or your truck or whatever you're going to put the material into will be fed from this end of the machine. If you want to move the machine around, you, you can either leave it in this position or you can uh, take this bolt out here and pivot this arm back around, put it back in the transport mode. It's really important to pull this pin right here, pull this pin before you operate the machine. This keeps the chain locked in position for transport. When you're not using the machine, put the pin back in place to keep the chain from loosening up when you move that arm back and forth, or if you move that arm back and forth. You have three hydraulic hookups. This one activates the lift cylinder back here so you can adjust the height of your out key and these two go to the tilt cylinder right here and there's also a speed control on the tilt cylinder as well so you can adjust the speed there. These two functions control <coughs> the speed of the chain and control the saw blade off or on. The, um, There'll be another video showing you how to install the blade and remove the blade, well, along with some maintenance mm -hmm. tips on lubrication and chain tension and replacing links as necessary. So thank you all for getting on board with the Kirby. I wish you the best of luck in this season.